Are you ready to prep your fabrics and get ready for falling for autumn? Hey everyone, Kristen Sam here and I just got my Falling for Autumn kit from our sponsor Daylily Fabric Shop. So I wanted to quickly go over the fabrics. I know that they are confusing when you are trying to decide which ones to cut, which, which fabrics and all of that. So I'm going to go over all of that for you quickly. All right, so I want to point out a couple of things. So the the cutting starts on page four of our book and up at the top of page four, there are diagrams, if you're not already aware, not diagrams, but wording as far as what size a fat 16th is, what size a fat quarter is, and that will be really helpful in determining which fabric, because some of them are very similar and it's hard to tell them apart. So that will help to have the size, all right? And I added in a quarter yard because that wasn't already on there and I didn't, already know those dimensions you probably do but I googled it and it's 9 by 42 to 44 something like that whatever with the fabric it is all right so um, the way that I start so first off a couple of things I'm gonna back almost all of my fabrics with fusible backing Kimberbell fusible backing it's available from our sponsor and it we get our discount code with that stabilizer so that's what I'm gonna use the other thing is that when I open up my box, the first thing I do is I separate all of the fabrics because they're all inside of one. You might think that, oh, I didn't get that one. We'll check because they're all inside. They're all folded together. So what I do is I separate them by color and just like all of the browns and all of the purples and all of the oranges and whatever, I, that's what I start with. That's the first thing I do just so that I can go through the book and grab from there. All right, now there, like I said, there are several that are very similar, and so I'm going to go over each of those. The other thing, I haven't started cutting yet. I haven't started ironing on my fusible stabilizer. I'm just talking about fabrics at this point. So on page six and seven, there is a directional, or I'm sorry, there is a guide as far as how to cut them. And like I said, I'm not there yet, but this will tell you once we figure out all the different fabrics, it will tell you um, what way to cut them them and that is important for the ones that are directional fabrics but also so that you get the most out of your fabric because if you're cutting them haphazardly or um, turned the wrong way you may not have enough fabric I find that Kimberbell and Maywood they're very generous with their fabric cuts so I haven't had that happen but I always follow the guide the guide really tells you um, that if you have them all going this way then you're gonna have plenty of extra fabric and and so I find that very helpful and helpful and like I said that's on page six and seven all right now look quickly because I gotta go get my workout um, let's just go over all of the fabrics each one so I already put them all in order um, by the way there's also numbers on the on the pages so one through I think it was like 27 let's see 23 1 through 23 and it says like F1 all right and then I wrote myself little notes to be able to tell you um, what will work and then I put them in my box in that order, all right, so that I've got them all so that I know and I can tell you which ones are which. And then I will um, cut them and put them into my packets. If you haven't ordered the packets, I highly recommend them. They, they make it so easy. I will add a link here for the packets. The packets literally just make things so easy and so organized. Um, and they come really quick off of Amazon so you can order them now and be all ready for prepping your fabrics. All right. So let's go through each one. All right, with my little notes on how to tell which one is which. So the first one is this cream fabric. There's a cream and there's a white and they're very similar. So point, I'm just pointing that out. The cream is the large one. It's a half a yard and it is a cream, just silky solid, plain fabric. All right, that's fabric one, fabric one, all right? And like I said, it's similar to the white. That's why I'm pointing out that there's a cream and there's a white. Um, and you can tell because the white, the next one, that's fabric two, is the smaller one. This is nine by 21 inches, all right? So this is the white and it is F2, fabric two. And it is a fat eighth. All right, and then number three, fabric three, is a minty blue, a light minty blue, silky solid. And that one is fabric three, it's a fat 16th. 
all right and then fabric four is what I'm calling Marlin blue. I think of this as Marlin blue. It's a silky solid. And this one is number four, fabric four, and it is a fat 16th, one fat 16th for your um, blue fabric. And then number five, fabric five, is the chevron. It is the navy blue with chevron on it. And this one is a fat quarter. It's fabric five, a fat quarter with the chevron print. This is a directional print, by the way. So again, you want to look at page six and seven to cut it the right direction. All right. And then, which you might think it doesn't matter right now, but then you get to your block and you're like, oh darn, my chevron's not going the same way as, as it is in the book or how Kristen's showing it, whatever. And again, your quilt your way, you can do it however you want, but if you want it to look like how they're recommending in the book, then you want to cut it in the, those directional fabrics in the way that they're describing to do that. And that's on page six and seven. All right, so fabric six is a green silky solid. It's a, like a hunter green silky solid, um, maybe an olive-ish green, but that is fabric six and it is a fat 16th, one fat 16th. And like I said, all of the sizes are up at the top. So you can see a fat 16th is nine by 11. So that makes it easy to distinguish. Well, is it this green one or that green one? That makes it a little bit easier when you know the sizing. All right, so this is number seven, fabric seven, and it is green with starburst on it. I don't know the actual names. Actually, we might even have it written on there. Vintage Flora, as all mine says. But so I call them starburst. I'm sure that's not accurate, but that's how I see them. So this is fabric seven, and it is a fat eighth, and it is just the green with starburst on it. All right. And then fabric eight is the white with shapes on it. All right. And this one is a fat eighth, a fat eighth for fabric eight, all right? And it is the white with green shapes on it. All right, and then fabric nine, this is another directional fabric. This is the yellow with little dots on it. It's lined dots. And this one is directional, like I said, so make sure to check pages six and seven, I believe it was, um, for the, the cut diagram so that you can get the, the direction going the correct way. And this one is a fat eighth. This is fabric nine. It's a fat eighth directional fabric. All right, and then next page, fabric 10 is the gold silky solid. Now there's a gold and there's a mustardish gold. So these are very similar. So again, you can tell the difference because of the size. So fabric 10 is the gold plain silky solid and it is the nine by 21. So you can tell because of the size, it's nine by 21 for the golden one. And this is number 10. And then the mustardish gold one is larger. This one is an 18 by 21. All right, so that's how you know that this is fabric 11. Fabric 11 is a mustardy kind of gold, and it's very similar to the other gold. So that's why I'm pointing out the size really helps to be able to determine which one it is. So this is fabric 11, all right? Fabric 12, I like this one. This is like a mauveish lavender color. And this one is a fat 16th, maybe a rose lavender. I'm not sure what it's actually called. Um, but this one is number 12, fabric 12. And like I said, it's a rose lavenderish color. You can see my shirt is a little bit more pink. So there's one like this and then there's a darker one. So again, go by the size and it is number 12 and it's a fat 16th. All right, and then number 13. Now this one, it threw me for a loop for a minute. There are two of these, this dark orange, like a burnt orange color, and then there's one that's a burgundy. And it's really hard to tell in the little squares on the book which one is which. So you have to tell by the size. So when there is one that is um, goes with the borders, what was it, let me see the inner border. So there's one for the inner border and then there's one for all the regular fabric cuts. So there are two pieces of these. So you wanna make sure to have them in the correct order. So this one is fabric 13 and this is the one that is a fat 16th. That means it's nine by 11. It's the burnt orange color and it is a fat 16th. So the other one, the larger one, longer I think it was, is for the inner borders. We'll talk about that later. But this one is fabric 13 and it is the burnt orange in a nine by 11. 
All right, and then is that pretty burgundy. I love this one. This is so fall color, right? So this one is burgundy. This is fabric 14, and this one is an 18 by 21. So that means it's a fat quarter, I believe. Um, 18 by 21 is a fat quarter. All right, so the burgundy color is number 14, okay? And then number 15 is just a scrap fabric. And it's similar to that those others, and it's similar to that lavender one we did earlier, the, the rose-ish lavender one. So you can tell from the size. This one is a very small little fabric square scrap, sorry, fabric scrap. It's probably about five by five. I haven't measured it, but it is just the fabric scrap. This one is number 15, fabric 15. It's a violet uh, kind of purple. All right. And it is number 15. Number 16 is another fabric scrap. And this one is brown with lines all over it. This is number 16 and it's just a fabric scrap. All right. There's a lot of browns in this box. And so the telling from the size made it easy for me to be able to determine which one is which. And now you get that information just told to you. So it's nice and easy for you. All right, now this one is number 17. This one, brown. I'm not sure how to tell you the difference because there's a taupe brown and then there's a brown and there's the brown with lines on it. There's a uh, lighter tan. There's lots of brown. So I figured out which is which. So just follow along. So this one is number 17 and you can see it's just brown. I'm not sure how else to describe it. It's brown. <laughs> All right. All right, and this one is number 17. This brown is a 17 and it is a fat 16th. All right, so a fat 16th, let's see, that was nine by 11. So nine by 11 for the regular brown. It's not the taupe or the tan, it's just a regular brown and it is the nine by 11 and it is number 17, okay? And then number 18, I'm calling this taupe. It looks very taupe colored to me. So this one is number 18 and this one is a fat eighth. So it's longer than the other brown one. All right, and it's more of a tan taupe color. Taupe, I would definitely call this a taupe color. All right, and this one is a fat eighth. So that means it is nine by 21. Nine by 21 will tell you which brown you've got and it's the taupe colored one, different than the darker brown one. Okay, this is number 18. All right, and then number 19 is the tannish brown with the orange peel on it or lattice on it. It's hard to tell because I think this used to be called lattice and maybe it's still, the fabric might be called lattice, but the quilting design is called orange peel, but it really is that same look. <laughs> so it's a little confusing. But anyway, this one is number 19 and it is a fat quarter, all right? Fat quarter of the lattice fabric, the brown lattice fabric, number 19. And then number 20, this is another brown, so just so confusing, right? But this one is like a tannish brown. It's lighter than that lattice one. You can see it here, all right? It's lighter. This is number 20, and it is a fat 16th. So what did we say a fat 16th is 9 by 11, all right? So 9 by 11 size, you can tell from, just look through your browns to determine the size. And this one is the light brown, um, fat 16th and it's number 20. So that dark brown was also a fat 16th, but you can tell that this isn't the dark brown. All right, this is the tan and it's F20, fabric 20. All right, last page. And there's only a few more. And this one is tan, all right? So um, another tan, let's see, how is that different than the other? So the others were a little bit this taupe one. I'm going to show you the taupe next to it so that you can see the difference. All right, they're pretty close, so it can be confusing, but the size helps to determine. So this one is an 18 by 21. It's a fat quarter, so it's an 18 by 21, and it's tan. All right, hopefully that will help you to see. This one is number 21. Let's see, what was that? The taupe one was a fat eighth. This one is 18 by 21 is a four, fat quarter. Yep, fat quarter. All right, so this one's a fat quarter, 18 by 21, tan, and this is number F21. All right, fabric 21. 
and we're almost done. This one is brown with white stripes. There are two of these, so be careful. There's, and by the way, this is a directional fabric, so you're gonna wanna pay attention to those diagrams, the cutting diagrams on this one to get it the right direction. So this one is a fat quarter. This one is for all of the cuts, whereas there's another one I'll show you later in the box that is our binding. All right, and they're different sizes. This one is a fat quarter. The other one is three eighths of a yard. All right, so almost a half a yard. So that's how you can tell which one goes with which. So this one is number 22, all right? Put them in order so that you know which ones you're working on so that when you put them in your packets, you, you're getting the right fabric. So number 22, because you don't want to cut up the one that's for the binding because then you're going to have a bunch of little strips that are partial strips and it will be more work. So make sure you're using the right one. The, the one for all of the regular fabric cuts is the fat quarter one, the one that is... Uh, what was it? Nine fat quarter, 18 by 21. 18 by 21. This is number 22 fabric. All right. Number 23 fabric, 23 fabric is the tan with lines all over it. All right. Now this one, there's two of also because our backing fabric is this one. So there's one that has, I'll show you in a minute. We're almost there. That backing fabric is a lot. It's one and a half yards of fabric. And this one is a fat quarter. All right. So fat quarter is 18 by 21. So use that one for all of the regular fabric cuts. And this is number 23. This is our last of the regular cuts of the fabric. So this is fabric 23. It's a fat quarter. It's the tan with lines on it. All right. And then we just have a couple more that are the others. So this one is our inner borders. Remember we had two of these. So this is the bigger one. This is a quarter yard. And that's the one I Googled to see the size. It's nine by 42 or 44, whatever with the fabric is. All right. So a quarter yard and it's that burnt orange one. So there were two. So make sure you're using the bigger one. This is for the inner borders. Okay. Inner borders, quarter yard is that burnt orange inner borders all right and it's the same as f13 if that helps you okay f13 was that other burnt orange one that was smaller all right and then our outer borders is the petals the tan with petal fabric and this one is five eighths of a yard so, all right so this is a big one and i don't think we had this anywhere else we don't it's only this one so this petal one is for our outer borders all right and then our binding strips is that uh, brown with lines, the horizontal lines on it. This one is three eighths of a yard. This is the one that we had earlier. This was also fabric 22, but it's a different cut. That's the smaller cut, the fat quarter. This one is the three eighths yard. All right. So the bigger one, this is for our binding. And then our last one is our backing fabric. It's the biggest piece. It's one and a half yards of fabric. This one is um, our back fabric and it is tan with a bunch of lines on it. And it's not, it's easy to tell which one because it's a lot of fabric. So this one we had earlier, this was also fabric 23, but it was a different cut. And that one was a fat quarter. This one is one and a half yards. So it's easy to tell those two apart. That's all the fabrics. They're all in order, easy to tell, very fun. And now I'm going to start prepping each of them and cutting them and putting them into my folders. And I'll also do the embellishments. And I come if I come up with more things that I want to tell you to be able to help make it easier for you, I'll add to this video. I get this question a lot. Do you put your fusible stabilizer on the back of the entire fabric or do you cut the pieces first and then stabilize those? I've done it both ways. It's total personal preference. The way that I look at it, if I have a bunch of time on my hands, then I cut each one and I stabilize that piece. 
Um, if I don't have time, which I haven't lately in, in a while, <laughs> I just stabilize the whole fabric and it makes it really easy to cut and it's definitely a faster process. And the way the the key thing is if you're saving your fabrics, which I definitely save my Kimberbell fabrics, then you don't need to worry about it being wasted. All right. You don't want to waste your stabilizer. Of course, it's not the cheapest thing, but you're going to use it. So I save all of my fabrics, even the ones that are already stabilized. And when I have a project or an applique or something that I need fabric, I grab it from my stash. And if it's already stabilized, bonus. <laughs> so that's the way I look at it. So either way will work totally fine. Stabilize the individual pieces or stabilize the whole fabric, whatever works for you. All right. Another tip. So we've, if you've done a quilt project with me before, then you know, I highly recommend making your filler blocks a half inch larger. And the reason for that is it will make it so that when you do the quilting step, it will tack it down that placement and tack down of the batting and then placement and tack down of the main fabric. And it just makes it easier. Otherwise you're taping in place or holding it and watch your fingers if you do that. But, um, if you can do your filler block a half inch larger, then it will be just enough that it will tack it down and then we'll trim it at the end. So that's on the filler blocks. But I noticed there is a problem. Don't do it on all of your filler blocks. And I will try and make a guide of all of them. But the ones that you don't want to make larger, you can see them on page 54. So these that are going to be sewn together, you want those to be the correct size. Otherwise, when you sew them together, they're not going to be correct. All right. So all of these, and like I said, I'll try and make a guide, um, but it's really important to look through your book. And when you are planning out, so here's what I do. I write on all the ones on, on the filler blocks on the ones that I'm going to, I recommend cutting larger and you have enough fabric to do so. Um, to cut them a little bit larger, I write a note here and then I also write myself a note on the guide because keep in mind that, so like see here, I'll cut, I'll write it on the guide because I refer to this guide to make sure I'm going to have enough fabric to be able to cut it correctly. And so I'll write it on here as a mental note. And then the ones that have, um, where they're the smaller pieces that we're going to sew them together, you can see I crossed them out. All right. So uh, also on your binding, you want to cross those out as far as what's get stabilized, but all of these will be stabilized or at least I stabilize mine. It's up to you. If you do yours, I stabilize all of mine except for binding and, um, velveteen and some of the embellishments, most of the embellishments and, and we'll go over more of that, but I just want to recommend the filler blocks. If you can cut them a half inch larger, it you'll, you'll be happy. I promise it will make it an easier process. Um, but there are those ones. I think I said it was page 54, um, that you don't want to cut those larger because we're going to sew them together. Okay. So I hope that helps. And like I said, I'll try and make a guide for you too. I just noticed. So I haven't even started my project. I'm just working on the um, prepping and my cover's already come off. <laughs> so a lot of people take their book to um, some copy store and they will bind it for you. And I've never done that. I always just deal with the fact that my book is going to fall apart because I'm pretty hard on the books. I do an awful lot of going back and forth to make sure that you've got all the directions and all the information. And it's just funny that before I've even started, my covers already come off. <laughs> so take care of your books. I've been waiting for my air conditioner to turn off so that you don't hear it in the background, but it's on all day because it's hot. So let's just deal with it. So one other quick note, if you don't like to stabilize your pieced project parts, so the applique pieces for pieced projects, then you could put a little star. I like to stabilize mine. I absolutely stabilize them. That is my personal preference, but it's not necessary. It's totally up to you. I think it makes for a crisper look, um, but it can be a little bit harder to hold them down. I use my little mini iron. I have a mini iron. In fact, I will add a link here for my mini iron that fits in my hoop and it works so great, especially on pieced projects. But on the pieced projects, there's a pieced star. There's actually two of them and a pieced pumpkin. And so when you see those, if you choose not to stabilize those, you could put a little star on those so that you know um, not to stabilize those when you're 
cutting and prepping your, your fabrics. I do stabilize mine, like I said. So completely optional, but I wanted to point that out as something to keep in mind for those that choose not to. All right, so after all 27 fabrics are cut and prepped and ready, done, yay, then it's time to move on to the embellishments. So the embellishments, most of them will go in the packets um, for each of the blocks, like the vinyl and the leather and um, what else? There was something else. There was a bunch of them. So most of those will go inside of your regular packets. It'll tell you like um, black embroidery leather goes with good books for. So you'll just run down that list. It's on page eight and nine. So you'll put those in your packets, but some of them are for after. And there's not a whole lot, but I made a special packet for embellishments that are after the fact. And it is the, the signs the um, the leather for the other signs, the wreaths, the little acorns, the pom-poms on the blanket. That was really it. So um, all of those are for after the fact, but all the other ones do go in the regular packets for the blocks that because we will need those. The velveteen, that was the other thing I, was, I didn't mention. I don't think I mentioned earlier. And cork and we'll use that while we use the block and don't worry i go over every single block before i start the block i say these are the products that you'll need so you can check it off and make sure that you have them and you don't have to pre-prep some people choose to do it as you go i used to believe very strongly in doing it as you go because it takes a long time it takes a few days to get everything all ready and it's boring, right? You want to get playing and having fun with your embroidery machine. So completely up to you whether you prep ahead of time with the packets or not. Totally up to you. All right, after you do the embellishments, then it's time to do the batting. And what I did is I went through and I made, um, I wrote little notes on every single page of what size batting that we need. So I'm going to make it into a file for you that's quick and easy so that you can just run down the list of what size batting for each of the blocks and then also for the border blocks. For the inner and outer borders, I am not going to pre-cut my batting because I want to wait until I know the size of my block, my quilt. All right, so we will always start when before we do inner borders and outer borders, we will measure our specific quilt and determine the size so that we get batting exactly the right size on the inner and, and outer borders. Whereas for all the blocks, we trim them down after we put it down so it's perfect. All right, so that's the last step is the batting. So I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting my batting. And like I said, I will make a list for you. I will include it in this video so that you can do a screenshot of it. I will also add it to the Facebook group, Kristen Creates group on Facebook. Um, so if you're a part of that group, you can easily download it and keep it for your reference. All right, last step, batting. And then I'm gonna edit this video and get it posted for you. Oh, and real quick, one note about the Flexifoam. It does come in your embellishment kit. You have everything that you need. On the bottom of page 10, there is a diagram of how to cut the Flexifoam. There's two options. So there's this version if you're going to use a larger hoop, like I think it's six by 10 or larger. Yep. And then this version if you're using a five by seven hoop. All right. So either one, choose which one you're going to use. Um, like I said, on the bottom of page 10 to cut the Flexifoam. I was asked how much batting you're going to need. So of the Kimberbell Project batting, I opened, I had one that was already opened and I have this left. All right. So less than one. But keep in mind, I did not do my inner borders and outer borders yet. Um, and some people choose to add batting on the backing, which I do not because I do each block as I go and I don't add an extra layer, but you can choose to do that. But inner borders and outer borders, I wait to do the batting until I know the size of my quilt. So I didn't even open my brand new project batting from Daylily Fabric Shop. So you will use less than one. Mine was already open and I, I didn't quite finish it off. So um, less than one, not counting the inner borders and outer borders. <laughs> Thank you. 
So don't forget, you need a goal, right? We always have a goal. And I love seeing in the YouTube comments or the Facebook comments how you're doing with your goal. So start thinking about it because we're going to start this project. I actually started my goal on Tuesday when I received my products from Daylily Fabric Shop. That was the beginning of my goal. And I never do this, but my goal this time is weight loss. And I choose not to do that because it's a big one, right? It's a hard one. Um, and it's hard to be vulnerable on your weight weight and I'm on this cancer blocker pill that makes my body go nope 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 we're not gonna lose any weight and and so it's more difficult but that is my goal so I am working on weight loss and so ever since Tuesday I started on Tuesday I haven't had any sugar <laughs> No, no sweets, no sweets whatsoever, nothing. And I have a sugar tooth, like sweet tooth. I love sugar. So I haven't had any of that. Plus I'm doing intermittent fasting. So I stop eating at nine o'clock at night, no foods, no matter what, even holiday, whatever, no foods uh, after nine o'clock. And then at least until nine o'clock the next morning, minimum, usually even later than that, but at least 12 hours of intermittent fasting. And that is really working for me so far. So so I've actually lost four pounds and I know it's just water weight, but I feel less bloated. So it's a start. It's a good start. I'm happy with it. So I am going to work this goal either until I finish my goal, get to my goal weight. That would be amazing or throughout the entire length of this project. Um, by the way, I'm also working out like crazy because of this being my goal for weight loss. So every night I'm either running on my treadmill or hiking up some mountain or riding my road bike or my mountain bike. I've done lots of workouts in the time that I've started this goal. So I'll add some photos about that. But um, my husband and I have been doing lots of hikes and um, mountain bike rides that are so dirty. <laughs> I'm not used to that. I'm a road cyclist. I'm not used to mountain biking at all. And like, it's really funny. I have to tell you this one little thing. So I don't know if you've ever been on a mountain bike ride, but I did my first one just recently and I get to this tight corner and I'm like, oh, yeah, die, 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 and I'm yelling out for all of the world to hear me of I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. And I'm going around this tight corner and then I get home and I watch a YouTube video about mountain biking and you're supposed to use the corner. There's this berm where the, the dirt goes up on the side and I'm like, actively trying to fit in this little area rather than using that berm and so I'm gonna have to figure that out but anyway it, it's a whole new process for me I'm trying to learn about it and when I post pictures on Facebook of my mountain bike rides all my friends are going where's the pink where's the pink because I'm all of my road bike gear is pink and it's been pink for 16 years and now I've got all this teal stuff for my mountain bike so totally different but anyway, getting lots of exercise, lots of activity, and when it's too hot outside or I'm too busy with all of the things going on, then I've got my treadmill and I can run on my treadmill and um, take care of that at night. So last night I actually ran in Vietnam. <laughs> How cool is that? So on iFit, you get to run in all these amazing places, run, jog, walk, whatever it, it is, whatever you choose to do. But um, in fact, the one I did last night was a recovery run and I didn't want to recover. I was actively running so you just speed it up and the trainers goes along with it and it works out fine so anyway what is your goal I want to hear about it think hard about it there's a lot of things there's so many things that we can do to improve ourselves to be at our best selves so cleaning up your craft room working on old projects um certainly health eating really healthy that I've had lot that goal lots of times where I won't have any junk food during an entire project and that is so good for you so that's a really good one I like that one um working hard to be around good people I think that's a really important one and that's a hard one because sometimes family right um but that's a really good one to, to work at being in a healthy environment. That's the way that I like to put it. I, I want to be in a healthy environment. That is a good goal too. So lots of different things, read more books, um, work on your projects, um, 
charity, helping people, being of service. That is all wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. My husband and I were of service last weekend um, for our church and that just feels so good. And everybody's so thankful and it's just, it's nice to be of service. So lots and lots of lots of ideas of what you can do to be your best self and to work on a goal and to, um, to do good, right? It's always good to, to do good and improve yourself as much because none of us are perfect. We all can improve. So let me know. I want to hear in the comments, what is your goal? And my shirt today, it is Independence Day. It is a great shirt. This is from Embroidery Library, if I recall. And look, I added some bling stars. Um, pretty fun. I actually have a program that I made those on years ago. I don't remember now. But anyway, the Design Embroidery Library, I will add information as long as I still have it. As you know, my hard drive died and so I don't have access to everything, but hopefully I've got this. Um, I will try and find it for you. It's a great shirt for Independence Day. How fun is that? In fact, our subdivision had a little kids bike parade today. I slept through it, but... <laughs> <laughs> but they had it. It was pretty cool from what I hear and from seeing the photos. So shirt today, um, by the way, it's an Amazon shirt. It's a great shirt. I use, I have this in lots of different colors. Um, it's a great shirt for embroidering on. So I will add a link for Amazon for this shirt up here so that you can order the shirt in lots of different colors if you choose. Hey everyone, so just a real quick reminder on how to find information underneath the video, very quickly. So open up a web browser, go to Christian Creates on YouTube, and underneath any video, so here is our current project, our Falling for Autumn quilt. If you click on the video, any video, underneath the video, so there's this little ad, we'll get past this, skip ads, and there's our video. There's Kristen and Christy telling you about the project. And if you just scroll down underneath the video, I'm on a computer um, and it looks a little bit different since I'm the owner of this, but you can see it starts to say, join the fun in our group project, blah, 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 show more. Click on show more and look at all this information that's under the video, all the direct links, and it tells you um, the coupon code, here's a direct link to purchase the items from our sponsor, Daylily Fabric Shop. Um, all, coupon code right there, falling for Kristen, the items needed, all of the information underneath the video all the time. It's always right there for you. And then also don't forget that I am a sponsor with them, Brilliance Essentials. So if you click on this link here, you can see it says, I am now an affiliate with Embrilliance. By the way, underneath here, it's got other items that I use that I get questions a lot, um, our upcoming projects. And then down at the bottom, it's got more information. It looks a little different on my end, but um, here's the um, embroidered shirt information. People are always asking me about the shirts. I always add that. I wasn't wearing one on this day, so it says no embroidered shirt, but all this information is underneath the video always. Um, the the cl colors of thread that we're using, everything that you need to know is always under here. So as, if you are in the market for Embrilliance Essentials, please click on my link. It's right here, Embrilliance Essentials. Click on the blue link and it will take you to Embrilliance. And then from there, you just click on Essentials or whichever product you're looking for. The one I use is Embrilliance Essentials. So you click on that over on the left-hand side and there's the item currently on sale and you add it to your cart. That's all you do. You just click on my link and that puts a little cookie on your computer saying that you're supporting Kristen Creates. All right, and from a phone, you can do it that same way or you can click on the store button up at the top. It does the same thing and then right there is in Brilliance Essentials. All right, so anyway, check under the video. There's always lots and lots of information underneath the video. Um, with all the direct links and information. So just wanted to make sure that you know how to find that.